Hello everyone, this is Bronwyn Olschlager and this is Slim Down Class and I want to welcome you, I'm so excited. Today I want to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot lately, um, but before I go into that I want to tell you what we're doing. We are Whole Soul Intuitive and we are a weight loss company that specializes in um, specific eating habits that are super easy, anybody can do it, you can teach it to your kids, this is like breaking chains kind of stuff that I hope will eliminate a lot of eating disorders. In fact, I hope it will eliminate every eating disorder. I'm very passionate about that. And, it, uh, and we also focus on the emotional reasons, the creation part of the habit that is you know, the root of that problem so that we can help you overcome it so that the habits are easy to create and the old ones are easy to put away. So if you want to learn more about us, we are having an event on the 27th, excuse me, 29th of April, and we are going to be eating where catered, we have a professional chef come and cater for us. He always makes the most divine food, and he eats the way I eat. I'm a healthy eater, and I like that about him. So when you come, you know that you're going to get something that's nourishing for your body, and I'm going to show you how to do the eating habits. I'm going to show you how to, um, how to just there are things you know i can say this over and over and over again in this webinar on videos and in text and even over the phone but it, something happens when we sit down together and i actually help you walk through it and then things start clicking into place so i hope that you can come to our next event the next one after that is april excuse me may 20th and so if you can't come to april at least you can come to may so go to wholesoulintuitive.com and you can access how to register for that early registration comes with perks so take a look at that and let's go ahead and just get started <clears throat> I'm gonna have um, I have a guest here one of my star students and I may pick her brain so I'm just gonna give her a heads up I may take her off mute and pick her brain today so um, anyway let's go ahead and start one of the things that's on my mind a lot lately is this story my mouse and the frying pan story and it's something that I want to share today. I go into this, I'm, I plan on going into it in a lot more detail at our next event. So I'm just going to kind of glaze over it since this is a short class and, and give you an idea of how your belief system works and where these, if, you know, when we create an emotion, it started with a belief, it started with a thought. So the way that I see this is we have these, we have this subconscious mind. We're a little kid. We, we absorb everything and every thought that flits through our mind is the truth we think. And everything that we see on television is the truth. We think, even though this creates a lot of conflict in us, we're like, Oh, that's true. And that's true, but they're not the same. And then we have this conflicting thing. It creates a lot of anxiety, it creates a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. And there are things as we, you know, as, as that happened to us, we create beliefs like I don't understand and I'm not worthy and just all of these things that really, really affect our bodies. They, and if I'm going to say this, this is huge. I like to do this health thing, but this will show up in your, your relationships. This will show up in your money and it shows up in your body somehow, whether you put on extra stores of fat or whether you create some sickness in your body based on your the steps that you take after you think something, feel something, and are driven to some action. So, so let's talk about this story, this mouse in the frying pan story. I had an experience when I was 15. Oh, I'm so glad because this is like, I think, one of the best stories. And um, let's just, let me go back in time here. I was 15. I was just starting to be a nanny. I was a mother's helper. The mother stayed home. Um, she had some health issues, and so she just needed me to help her take care of her babies. And I, and so I was there, and I would feed the babies, and I would kind of take care of the house. I was okay at it, but not very good. I was better at the babies. And one day, we started noticing that there were mouse tracks on the silverware, and not just mouse tracks. It was like puddles of mouse urine, and oh, and it looked like. A lot of mouse, mice had a party on the silverware, and it was in the cupboards, and it was everywhere. We had these little babies. We had a one-year-old, and uh, well, he was older by then. It, I started working for them when they had a brand newborn baby and a one-year-old, and this all started showing up about nine months later. 
and I'm surprised it actually was gave us that much time because it was such a bad problem. So they, we have moved into this house. They have moved into this house and I started helping them right after. And they had shoved everything into this one bedroom and called it the storage room because she was getting ready to have a new baby. And so we didn't address this room that had a whole bunch of their stuff in it. We just never went in there. Um, so once we started seeing all these mice in the kitchen and we were catching them with mouse traps and we were putting the traps in the kitchen and dealing with it over there, and it wasn't working. We were just catching lots of mice. It was still a problem. There was not something getting actually taken care of. And I think that's really important when we talk about the leaf work. The problem was in the kitchen, but the real problem was in the storage room. And so we went in there and we started opening boxes and we started taking care of this, this problem. So I, I opened the first box. <laughs> Woo! It was full of baby mice and there was a mama mouse and she jumped into my face. and as I would open bigger, some of the bigger boxes had more than one nest of mice in them, more than one mama. Oh, I'm grossing out. Anyway, they were jumping into my face to protect their babies. And, and I, I, I like freaked out and ran out of the room and I decided to, to um, get a broom because I watched lots of Tom and Jerry growing up. <laughs> that doesn't work. You have to have a good tool if you're going to really take out the mice. If you hit it with a broom, it's going to scurry off and hide, and then you still have a, a core belief, a mama mouse, that's going to cause more problems for you. She's going to have more babies. So anyway, I was hitting them with a the broom. That wasn't working. I went, I got to do something because I want to take them out with one hit. I don't just want to hurt them. I want them dead, and I don't want it to hurt when they die. I, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I know, <laughs> but I, but I was, I, they were jumping into my face and I would bat them. Oh, I forgot a step. I found a tool that works. I found a cast iron frying pan in that storage room and I grabbed it and I'm, it was heavy and I'm like, okay, this is going to work because I was in my warrior stance and I was not messing around. So I was going to hit him really hard, really fast. And with this heavy, heavy tool, and I was going to make sure that this mess got cleaned up. And I was, I'm not kidding you when I tell you I, I took out hundreds of mice that day. It was gross. But this, this is important. If you're thinking of these, okay, so let's say we have these mama mice who are the core beliefs. And we take a wimpy tool to the problem that's on that over in the kitchen. Do you understand what I'm saying? If we are not dealing, so we can deal with our fat, right? We can deal with our fat and our eating habits, but we're still only looking at the silverware drawer. But if we take this to the level, and this is one of, this is what I want to talk to you about today. This is, there's this one core belief that affects people in all the areas of their life. It's the one core belief that everything else seems to stem off of. I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute. But the point is, if we deal with these things, like I dealt with this storage room, I did not stop to take a break. I don't even remember if I ate that day because I was taking care of this problem. I did not take a rest from taking out this vermin that was creating a health problem for the little babies that I was taking care of. I was not messing around. And that's how I feel about taking care of the belief system. If we know there's a problem, if we know we're having a struggle, then we know that there's a core belief that's creating babies and we need to just address them. And I believe in plowing through the babies and getting to the core so that we can deal with the real problem really fast. And so this is, this is what I do in my body breakthrough group. This is my mission to help you plow through this stuff really fast so that it can show up physically for you. And you watch, it will show up in the other areas of your life as you deal with these things. You'll be like, oh my word, I didn't even think that was connected to that over there. Like the silverware, right? It's just another silverware drawer. It's the cupboard, whatever. So this core belief that I want to talk to you about today is worthiness. A lot of vermin breathe off of this 
problem, this belief that we think we're not worthy. I come from, um, I'm a religious girl. I come from a, a religion that believes in being healed in miracles. I believe in miracles and I know how to make them happen. And that's part of what we're doing here. So the thing is that most people that I know believe that they're not worthy of something happening fast. They're not worthy of it being easy. And it can be easy. It's simple. All you need to do is be willing to unconditionally face the issue. So um, what I want to do right now, if you're willing, Allie, if you are willing, just nod your head, because this is going to be on YouTube. So you need to let me know if this is okay. Yes, it's okay if you want to say no. Yes? Okay. All right, I'm going to unmute you. Thank you so much for being willing to be vulnerable. I think you're amazing. I've been watching you and I really think you're just amazing. So, okay, I'm going to cry about it. Okay, moving on. Got the clap. <laughs> anyway, um, what I want to know is if you were to look deeply inside of yourself, is there any, any bit of this, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve, hiding in there? Oh yeah, not as much as there used to be, but there is. Still Good, okay. All right, so if we were to take this to a deeper level, and this is part of what I, this is how I live. I know that these core beliefs that are an issue, when we take care of them on this level, there's always a deeper level, and we're going to always be taking it to a deeper level and going really deep. And so sometimes it can feel like we're dealing with the same problem over and over and over again, and we're not learning, and that's not what it is. Do you feel the truth of that? Yes. Okay. All right. So it's easy for us to, with this belief that we're not worthy, as we're dealing with that core belief, and any core belief, actually, if we're dealing with that and we think that we're not worthy of it being simple and we think that we're not just taking it to the next level, we actually have a tendency to pick on ourselves and say, I'm just not getting it. I'm just not getting it. When am I just going to get it? But in, in my experience so far, and I wonder how deeply it can really go, we may never actually get all the way to perfection on this thing. <laughs> While we're, you know, there may just always be this progression forever on this thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so if you're willing, are you willing to share how you feel some of these things are showing up for you and how you've overcome some of the, some of those levels in the past? Um. The, I'm not ready. It shows up a lot in my School work. School work. Um, I have gotten better, but it it has been a block to me getting help mm -hmm. with my uh, with my studies. Mm -hmm. and even just uh, this past week, I've gone to more uh, to more tutoring, and uh, and my schooling has improved. Um, it has shown up in my uh, skin picking. I... So, in when you say that it has shown up in that you feel worthy of of taking care of your skin nicely, mm -hmm. awesome. So your skin is healing. Yeah. So you've decided that you're worthy of getting help when you need it. Good, and you're worthy of taking care of yourself. I love that. That's beautiful. Oh, let's see. Where do I want to go from here? Okay, I know what I want to do. All right, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to go ahead and mute you. And I'm just going to walk everyone through a guided meditation. And we're going to lock this in. So I invite you to just close your eyes. And... 
put your free hand <clears throat> up like this so that you're symbolizing that you're willing to receive, you're open. And see a purple conduit of light going out through the top of your head. And just plug into your source. Sometimes these feelings of unworthiness show up in that we believe what somebody else said about us. So I'm going to walk us through my unleashing process. We're just going to let go of some cords. I'm going to preface this. Most of the time in my own personal experience, the things that I think someone else is saying or thinking about me, they aren't. I did. I thought it of me. I'm the one. So let's go ahead and just fly off the earth. And we're going to go up into outer space. And there is a floating building. It's really beautiful. It seems safe and it's quiet. And there are beautiful plants growing all around it and the ivy growing up the columns and there are flowers. It's beautiful. Let's go inside. And in this building, we, we go in and there are statues and flowers and beautiful plants. And the whole building is it's just ivory white. It feels quiet and peaceful. And as we go through, we walk into a room that is set up like a courtroom. And we're like, huh, that's interesting. And I invite you to walk forward. And as you walk forward, a judge comes into the room. And you look at this judge and you're like, I am so glad it's you because I trust you. And you sit down in the defendant's spot. And you realize that you're about to be helped with a major problem. That you've been accused of not being worthy. And all the little vermin beliefs that have developed around that belief that you're not worthy, that you bought into. So you sit down, you look around the room and you notice that over in the plaintiff's seat, there are some individuals that have appeared. And for the sake of this, in this um, visualization this time, I invite you to recognize that these individuals aren't even real. They're not somebody you know. They're a representation of how you judge yourself, how you see yourself and the things that you say to yourself. And out from each one of these individuals is a cord coming out from their front, snaking across the room and attaching itself into your back and rooting itself into your internal organs. And it hurts you. It's causing problems. You look up at this judge that you trust. And as you are in pain, you ask for help. What do I do? 
And he tells you the first thing you need to do is acknowledge that you're guilty of buying into these lies. Just plead guilty. It's the first step. It's nobody else's fault. And it's completely fixable. So you plead guilty. And then you ask what you what you should do to get this off. It's hooked into you. It's gonna hurt to take it off. It's gonna hurt you worse to get it off, you think. And your trusted advocate, the judge, says, it's not gonna hurt, just pop it off. So you take a deep breath. Go ahead and take a good deep breath. And you trust and you pop off this cord. And he was right, it didn't even hurt at all. You thought it was gonna kill you, but it didn't. It didn't hurt at all. In fact, it felt good. And now you note that there is a mark where that cord was. You throw the cord over to the judge and he catches it. And he gives a tug and it pulls off the, the plaintiffs. And he throws it up into the air and it just turns into glitter. It's meaningless. It never meant anything in the first place, except for the power that you gave it. And now, you put your hand on your back where that cord was, and you note know that there is there's some bumpy scars going on there. And he brings out some healing salve. And you trust, and you let him put it on, or her, whoever your judge is. And with this salve going on to your scar, it completely disappears. The roots are gone, and there's no more spot, and now you're healed. And this judge puts their hands on your shoulders and, and tells you to look at how powerful you are. Look at this power that you have. And you pay attention and you notice that you're surrounded in this bubble of light and it's your power. And you get a little tutorial. And you face over to those plaintiffs who are the representations of the, the self-talk that's not serving, the beliefs that aren't serving you. And this judge teaches you that these things are going to keep coming at you. Mm. It's not going to go away in an instant, but you have power. So let's practice. Well, here these are, these individual nasties, and they're mad because you tried to take away their power over you. So they start tossing cords again, coming at you again. Only now you know that you have a bubble of power around you. So as they throw the cords, I invite you to imagine that they just bounce off the bubble. Well, now they're really upset and they're gonna try even harder to get to you. So they pulled out these high powered crossbows and they attach arrows to their cords and they start shooting. And it feels like it's coming from everywhere. but you know you have this bubble of power. You're aware now. 
And when those arrows come, they're deflected and they just bounce and fall to the ground. Completely useless. It did not work. You're free. You look at this judge and he or she says, well done. Time to go back. Keep your bubble strong. We're going to go back to the earth. Back into your house. Back into those places where those thoughts hit you. And now you're aware. You're worthy and you're powerful and deserving. All the good things, they're for you too. So when you get in, into a moment where those thoughts start shooting arrows at you, you let your bubble of light deflect them and you choose into a different thought immediately. And you choose to believe it. And as you practice, those arrows stop coming at you. And as you practice more and really lock this in, there are no more arrows, not those arrows anymore. And they stop and they go away. Now I invite you to open your eyes. And Allie, I'm going to call on you again. Are you interested in sharing your experience? Just nod yes or no. Yes. Okay. All right. How did that feel? Very good. I feel very peaceful. Much more confident good can you tell me what your intention is going forward with your new belief how you want to lock this in how it's going to show up in your life today well, maybe i want to want it to show up with my boundaries that hmm. i can say no to things Do you usually have a tricky time saying no to people? Yeah. Ah, awesome. That helps me understand you. <laughs> There's a book that I've been recommending lately. I'm going to recommend it to you. It's called Positive Personality Profiles. Okay. Um, and if you'll read that, I'm going to recommend that to everybody. If you'll read that, then we can discuss it okay. at, another, at another Slim Down class. Awesome. Oh, okay. I'm so glad that you were here today. And thank you so much for being open and vulnerable and sharing. Welcome. And we're just going to wrap it up. I just want to go over. I want to make sure everybody knows again. Our event is on the 29th. You are welcome. It's an all-day event. And if you're coming from out of town, um, there are all kinds of hotels around here. If you're in one of my groups, I'm sure that somebody else in my group might put you up for a couple of nights so that doesn't have to be such a, a hard thing to figure out as far as a place to stay and um let's see yeah I think that's all I wanted to share today so go ahead and go to wholesoulintuitive.com if you're watching this on YouTube feel free to share and like and leave your comments if you want to make yourself accountable this is a great way to make yourself accountable. Just declare your new belief, declare your intention. How are you going to lock this in? And I love you all, and I will talk to you later. We'll see ya. Bye. Bye.